Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to make sure you know all about the Capes and Lunatic Patreon. Don't miss out on all new episodes of Wade's World, Boob Windows and Long Boxes, our hard R movie reviews, and so much more, all completely uncensored. Access starts for as little as $1 a month, full videos when you pledge $3 a month. Check us out at the link in all of our show notes, or just go straight to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. I'm here for Peter. Aren't we all? That's right, kids. Welcome back. Get your whip on. Welcome back to the Ultimate Spicy I am Phil, joining me as always, the original Black Widow herself. It is. Hey y'all, it's Will with Whippin' Hellfire. Oh, Russell wants to be Black Widowed, literally. <laughs> oh my. I'm thinking you're gonna get up to you. And Ant-Man Day! May 2022! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my See, my theory's catching on. I know. Oh, no. Man, Russell coming in hot, man. Just, you know. Wild like an animal. Anyway, so yes. Our Top bro- five favorite drops that's, that are not mine. <laughs> Wild like an animal. Those boobs scare me. Uh, Black Widow's boobs do not scare me. She's Hello. always drawn very well. Yes. Steven Splat could never get his hands on Black Widow. <laughs> never. Fight me, Moon Knight nerds. <laughs> ah. So yes, our Black Widow uh, coverage continues for the month. Uh, this time we're covering a Marvel team up 82 through 85, including some other guest stars. Um, <clears throat> Shang-Chi. <laughs> Killing many birds with one stone, love Hellfire. No. <gasps> Are you bad mouthing Shang Chi? Oh, someone's gonna be getting on your case. <laughs> I know. What the, I know. What the f? Ooh, it's still too. It's still too racisty, tropey. But okay. Well, at least they in the movie. They there's no Fu Manchu in the movie. <laughs> Touche. We'll see. We'll have. I'll have to see how that pans out. Uh, oh, Russell, how about my boy Abomination back and looking comic accurate? Oh, at the end of that trailer, yes, check out Super Connectivity episode 347 to hear Charlie's thoughts on that. <laughs> nice. They got the budget to make a comic book accurate. So yes, Abomination that. got his ears. <laughs> All right, so should we jump into these? Oh, yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, so, um, oh, yeah. I want to say Amazing Spider-Man. Marvel Team Up 82 from June 1979. So close. I know. Only missed it by a decade. <laughs> Next year, Lil, would you like me to pick some old uh, 69, 1969 Spider-Man stories? Maybe for January. That's what we can do. Oh, my God. We could do so many. Spider-Man, Batman. Oh, my God. <gasps> Summer of 69. It, yes. Yes. Yeah, Summer of 69. Done done would that have to be three months <laughs> yeah i think we i think we can do it <laughs> oh yeah uh, uh, spider-man batman <gasps> did russell hear us earlier look team <laughs> danger <laughs> we or, were just having that discussion <laughs> either that or you heard an earlier episode oh my lord all right ray russell yes you heard you heard it here first next summer the summer of 69 spider-man batman daredevil and for the hard R stuff, uh, for the extra extra stuff, you know, go to the Patreon, obviously. Oh my <laughs> A couple of bulls down the gold. Uh, yeah, June 1979. Uh, writer Chris Claremont again. So you know the ladies are going, especially the redhead ladies, are going to be drawn particularly well because he demanded it. And well, penciler Sal Buscema, and somebody's getting right cross. Right, huh? Oh yeah, somebody's getting a right cross. Right across. It's like the prerequisite. Yeah, exactly. He loves it. Rose right crosses. Inker Steve Layola, 
Colorist Ben Sean, letterer Rick Parker, editor Alan Milgram. Oh, Milgram. Alan, not Al. Oh, fancy. I know, Mr. Milgram. Okay. He's not uh, hanging out with the fellas. <laughs> hey. <Hello. laughs> All right, so this one, no way to treat a lady. Oh, it's a cat woman to pet. Hey, oh. Speaking of women in tight black suits. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not Felicia. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, did you watch The Flash this week? Yeah, I did. Okay. So I, I know I was going to say, so you saw um, Sue and I was, you know, the tight black suit. I'm thinking, I'm like, if they cannot bury this episode, are they doing like their homage to Black Widow or something? <laughs> <laughs> like Tiny Black Widow? <laughs> Oh, CW never change. <laughs> I know. All right. So snow covers the streets of Midtown Manhattan as a certain red haired lady walks by the Daily Bugle building in the wee hours of the morning. When she sees a newspaper front page depicting Spider-Man and Red Sonia. Oh, we're going to have to cover that one day, too. We'll have to pull Charlie in for that one. <laughs> uh, on the wall, she imagines that she once knew Spider-Man as a friend. But then she dismisses two the arachnid themed, you know, heroes just hanging out, man. And they say she's just a friend. She is a redhead. Just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, how could a school teacher from upstate New York, she wonders, be a, the friend of a superhero? Nevertheless, she does remind he does remind her of something important, but she simply cannot think of what it might be. As she continues down the street, she is seen by a gang of four hoodlums who regard the lone woman as fair game. Heaven help those hoodlums. <laughs> I know. Soon they corner her in an alley, but when the leader, a bully named Alex, Alex, slaps her and tries to take her purse, he is suddenly hurled across the street. The three other hoodlums are dismayed to see that Spider-Man has appeared to protect their victim. Rather than flee, they attack. They're idiots. But Spider-Man slams them each in the into each other and knocks them unconscious. <laughs> Gives them the old Mo Howard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he happens to slip on a patch of ice. Where's that spider sense? Ugh. Uh, Psychosomatic. <laughs> oh, God. he has to sabotage himself. You know. Again, it's, it's a deep. Where? Oh, shout out to Travis Langley. Where is my uh, psychology of Spider Man? I'm waiting. Do Spider-Man Red Sonia and has a Conan-esque Hobgoblin? Is that... Oh, wait. Is there, is there a modern one, too? Because I know there's an old issue of Marvel team-up, too. <gasps> Lilith, we might be able to get at least two or three Spider-Man Red Sonia episodes. We're down a month of Red Sonia. Oh, man. We're, we're just blaming 2022 on the spot. 2022, uh, Red Sonia September. <laughs> summer of what? Oh, summer oh of September. Yeah. Summer of 69, right in the Red Sonia September. Oh, <laughs> It's going to be a sexy time, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's a modern mini. Yes. Oh. oh. Done. Say right less, Russell. It's done. See? <laughs> and I was thinking, I've been thinking to myself, oh, maybe I'll just play in two or three months in advance. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not Phil. That's not the Phil. I know. Hey, you really want to lose the ideas like the summer of 69 and Red Sonia September. Exactly. To my to my uh my old brain. No. So much good coming, kids. It's a lot of mate. Uh <laughs> sucking you off. Too here. early in the morning for this. A couple of balls down the gob. Uh Meanwhile, I know. Uh, where, where, wait, he slipped on some ice. Uh, no spider sense. <laughs> I know. But when the remaining hoodlum tries to stab him, the red haired woman knocks the thug unconscious with a flurry of karate chops. Judo chop! <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man is astonished at the woman's skill. When he looks closely at her, he recognizes her as the Black Widow. Sup, Tasha? What you doing? What's up, Nat? What you doing, baby girl? 
Man, Mary Jane, Red Sonia, now Black Widow. Woo! Where am I stuck in one of Will Hellfire's fantasies? Definitely, definitely a fanfic that may have, may have been written. Russell, I hope you know I need it to be on any time Hobby shows up. Might have some, might have something for you towards the end of the year, kid. Uh, you can always count on us for a gobble gobble good time in in November. <laughs> well, there is. Uh, well, that's. I think a lot of that's going to be Harry, but maybe in December. I think I have might have. I know I have some Demo Goblin. I think. Oh, where's my Marvel team up? Spider Man and Austin Powers, the Spider who shagged me. Oh, geez. Russell. Can we get somebody to write that script, and we'll do the live read on Patreon. Yeah, but <laughs> send us a script. It goes in with our uh, end of the year Austin Powers uh -oh. movie. Oh, it goes in. <laughs> this is my wife, Mary Jane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. She's a For boss. the love of God, nobody tell Rob. <laughs> oh, please. Like, yeah, Mr. Pure and Innocent Rob Southgate. Okay. Uh, I get so much right. Uh, I like yeah. that. <laughs> Oh my. That man shags. He just doesn't lick. Oh! Nobody tell Rob! <laughs> oh. Nobody oh. tell Rob! Oh. I'm back. All right. So, yes, yeah, Spider Man says, hey, it's Black Widow. She denies this, but before she can explain, she faints. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> 1979, you bras were fainting all over the place. <sighs> Too Ooh. much spandex. You What's think... that bulge? <laughs> you... Whoa! <laughs> Web shooter. Uh, He's like, I am happy to see you, but it's just a web shooter. <laughs> it is cold out. Come on, there was ice on those now. Come on. Uh, Spider-Man qu quickly carries her up the side of the Daily Bugle building and sets her down on the floor of a seldom used storeroom. Oh boy. We have now. This is how this is how a lot of my favorite uh, adult movies start. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say they are. We, did we just land in like Little Hellfire's fan fiction? Feigning from too many Joker nuggets. <laughs> Russell, where's the Joker nuggets? Uh, there's Wrong universe. I know. Then <laughs> she sleeps uncomfortably for a while, and once she awakens, Spider-Man brings her a cup of soup from an all-night deli. Aww. Just two spiders hanging out, man. All right, here's our MCU tie in. She claims to be Nancy Rushman, a school teacher <sighs> from upstate New York. Remember Iron Man? Aren't we always from upstate New York? Nobody, no good comes from anybody being from upstate New York. In the Marvel Universe, all, all the white people are from upstate New York. And remember, all the black people are either from Philadelphia or Harlem or Detroit, remember? Oh, I do. Ah, oh my well, God. it is New York, buddy. Yeah, it's New York, and it was pre, like, pre pandemic <laughs> New York. Nineteen seventy nine, kid. Uh, Spider Man asks where she learned karate, karate, but she does not know. <laughs> then she asks where she. Then he asks where she teaches, but she cannot remember. Angry and frustrated, she says she only knows her name. The rest of her life is a total blank. So what is this? A little hellfire on a Sunday morning? She's all hung over and can't remember her life. <laughs> Wandering around, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Who am I? Spider Man suggests she may have some identification in her purse, and when she opens it, he finds a Black Widow costume. That's my purse. <laughs> oh my! The woman first. <laughs> that's the cosplay. Like, Hill reference. <laughs> I was gonna say that's the cosplay closet. Closet. Little Hellfire keeps in the whips and chains room. Who? Oh. <laughs> The woman bursts into tears when she sees it, and Spider-Man tries to console her. Whoa. She looks like the Widow and fights like the Widow, he muses, and she has the Widow's costume, but she certainly is not behaving like the Widow. Then he tells her to put the costume on. At the very least, he says, its insulation will keep her warm. Oh. Oh. Change okay. I see, your, I see your kink. I see it. <laughs> uh... This she does, and Spider-Man, who thought to put on the costume might jog her memory, asks if she remembers any more. Unfortunately, she doesn't. She maintains that she's a teacher, and then she says she will change back into her street clothes, after which she would like him to take her to the nearest hospital. All the while Spider-Man has been with the lady, she has been tracked by pursuers with special radars. 
Are we, oh, we, we forgot to talk about the cover. The cover is very provocative. Oh, watch just the shadowy figure standing over Black Widow with a gun and saying, you're next, Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't know how to hold a gun. <laughs> oh, never change. Oh, Lord. Uh... Oh, yeah, Russell's in Kentucky. I'm stuck in the land of tobacco, racism, homophobia, and Mountain Dew. <laughs> Well, at least you have the Mountain Dew. <laughs> Mountain Dew makes everything better for me. <laughs> but only one color because they're racist. Uh, what's this? Widow fix everything really easy. Hey, big guy. Sun's getting sun's real getting low. Sun's getting real low. <laughs> uh, I do like Mountain Dew. Is that commercial? I do like Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew sponsors. Literally, I have every flavor of Mountain Dew ever made. Oh, my. <laughs> Gamer! <laughs> All right, come on. Come on. Come on, advertisers. Make us happy so we can make Rob Southgate very happy. Uh, yes, but yes. Yeah, so she's being tracked by pursuers with special radars. Once she stopped moving, they were able to triangulate her location and close in. Thus, just as she's about to change out of her Black Widow costume, see, she and Spider-Man are attacked by a squad of women flying single-person shield air cars. Shield women, <laughs> that's the better question in 1979. Women, no women, 1979. What Spider Man grabs her, hey, oh, and dodging energy blast, smashes through a window and runs down the side of the building. <laughs> the leader of the shield strike force. Oh, another topical. <laughs> Contessa Valentina Allegro de Fontaine orders her troops to shoot the kill. So, yes, Elaine, kid. Elaine's after her. Uh, nice. So, for those of you who don't know, yes. The vice president is after her. If you know, you know. Veep. <laughs> they, won't, they won't deliver her flounder across the street, so. <laughs> What? Nice, nice, nice reference. One of my favorite episodes. Uh, I request that for the next Capes and Lunatics Get Together Live. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe we'd do the contest. <laughs> you, you'll be out before we get the check. <laughs> uh, as long uh, as long as Spider Man is on the wall, she shouts. He is a sitting duck. Uh, oh wait. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, Spider Man, yeah, dodging. The leader of the shield. As long as Spider Man is on the wall, she shouts, he is a sitting duck. Spider Man snags one of the air cars with webbing, and he and Nancy are yanked off the building to land on a nearby snow covered roof. As they flee, Spider Man asks her why shield agents are after her if she is only a school teacher, but she has no idea. Moments later. It's my, it's my twin sister. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, no, wait, my twin cousin. <laughs> Spider-Man knows all about that, or he will. <laughs> they want to kill me. I'm a school teacher. I was teaching evolution in the South. No, she was teaching critical race theory. Oh, oh, yeah. really cool. <laughs> True. Uh, moments later, Spider-Man's shoulder is grazed by a bullet. Again, there's spider sense. And he staggers. Then, then one of the troops lands her air car on the roof and orders Nancy to halt. When Nancy tries to surrender, the trooper asks her, says her orders are to shoot her on sight. Suddenly, the school teacher slaps away the trooper's blaster and knocks her unconscious in an eye-blurring skirmish that is over in seconds. Nearly hysterical, Nancy has no idea how she did it, and Spider-Man tries to calm her, saying, "Pull yourself together, woman." Saying that, saying that too much is at stake for her to go to pieces. Surprised you didn't slap her. It was nineteen seventy nine. And it is Claremont, yeah. Good, good old backhand. Claremont. <laughs> Suddenly, the remaining shield troopers arrive overhead, and Spider-Man tells Nance, Nancy to get off the roof and find a subway while he tries to hold the troops off. Using his webbing, he smashes one of the air cars into a chimney, and then the lead vehicle knocks him over. Troopers start to pummel him, trying to force him to tell where the Black Widow went. <laughs> Pummeling him. Um... When Nancy sees what they are doing to him, she again becomes a human fighting machine, using her widow's bite and acrobatics to knock all the troops unconscious. 
After Spider-Man's head clears, he thanks her for saving his life. She replies that she is tired of running from S.H.I.E.L.D. and from herself. She needs to know who she is, a teacher or a superheroine. Suddenly, Spider-Man... Sp now the spider sense goes off. <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> Work. Uh... It's ting ting tingle in ting ting tingle in. And he turns to see Nick Fury, the head of Shield, with a blaster in his hand. So it was him. Not the Nick Fury you know and love, the David Hasselhoff Nick Fury. Old man Fury, yes. <laughs> Before David Hasselhoff Fury, that's the only. Uh... I did the MCU to do that, by the way. They need to have David Hasselhoff like worlds collide. And he and he better bring Andy meet Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury. And he better bring like, I did have I did have a sexy fun times with a black woman one time. Whoa! <laughs> hey, multiverse of madness is coming. Oh hey, stop the presses, Russell. Off topic. I but I loved your new interview with Dematteis. Thank you. Yes, actually, that was very good. Let's pat Phil on the head, guys. Oh, did Give you look gold star? Did yes, you of course I did, buddy. Oh, I know, but it was Captain America. <laughs> I listen. I, I do it for the numbers, buddy. But it was a good interview. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's always a great time with Mr. Dematteis. And again, I oh, am oh. in a Captain America Facebook uh, fan club, by the way. Somebody drug me into it, but it's very interesting. Learning a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. and hey, uh, Mr. Dematteis will be showing up somewhere towards the end of the year. So stay tuned, kids. Somewhere, wherever could it be? <laughs> Maybe in episode 150 of a certain show. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Me and my child within will not tell you anything. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> nice. All right. So, yes, David Hasselhoff has. So, Elaine and David Hasselhoff have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Louis Dreyfus and, uh, yeah. Um, well, at this point, Knight Rider. <laughs> Oh, I hope he brings Kit. Before Spider-Man can react, Fury shoots the widow in the abdomen and she falls to the roof, apparently dead. When Spider-Man touches her, he gets blood on his hands. Uh -oh. uh, Spider-Man demands an explanation, but when Fury doesn't answer, Spider-Man attacks him. Then Fury shoots him and he falls next to the widow. When uh, Val... Well, the cover did say he was next. <laughs> True. No false advertising here. Yes. So when Val revives, a Fury escorts her from the roof, ordering the other troopers to clean up the mess. Uh, uh, so what do you think, Lil? Uh, yeah, that happened. I was very intrigued that they actually shot both of them. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. We've got some stakes finally in a, in a Marvel team up. <laughs> And I think it was around this time, like the writers decided, yeah, maybe we should do like multi-part stories because I know like some of those early ones, then they they did like Just a lot of one and done, yeah. And then it's like every month, like even and it was an advertisement, absolutely. And that's what Dematteis was saying. He's like, you know, it's like you have to come up with an excuse every month why Spider Man's going to team up with somebody, and might as well make it, might as well make your job easier and stretch it out. Hey, yeah. hey, <laughs> and again, it's like a four-part story. It's like, hey, there's four months, man. I don't come up with a new excuse. You know? <laughs> Uh, uh, but it was a lot of action, and you know, you get the oh, who am I? Man, like being a spider adjacent must really make you am amnesiac. Like, it's crazy how many times amnesia comes into play. <laughs> and again, I'm like, I was thinking as I was reading this, it's like modern comics. This would have been two or three issues. Modern comics could never one, 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 the first issue would just be him finding her, especially with a female guest star. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And again, it would be like, I Q, are you? I can't remember. End of issue one. <laughs> Especially if Bendis is right now. We're trying to be nice to Bendis. I know. Oh, Mr. Bendis, we want to talk to you about Checkmate. Yes. And only Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe Naomi. <laughs> No. Maybe Naomi. Maybe I time. know. I actually like the work he did on one on the Wonder Imprint. Like I, I was very fascinated and sad that that didn't work out. I thought he did an excellent job with the Wonder Imprint. I was gonna say we, we at least want to ask him about Miles Morales and like maybe some Daredevil. Yes, yes, but but DC stuff specifically only checkmate. Yeah. Maybe a little Naomi. <laughs> oh, Russell, I'm sorry. He talked to Demon He had to rework his interview because mine was so good. Oh. 
you do get very you you you're uh, you've improved greatly on your interview skills. We're so proud of you, Philip. I give good interview people. <laughs> All right, so should we get to the next one? Let's do it. All right, Marvel team up eighty three, and uh, they always like to change the names on the cover. So yes, this time it says Spider Man and Nick Fury. Don't, don't worry, Black Widow is here, kids. From July nineteen seventy nine, uh, yeah, I believe the the uh, team hasn't changed. All the same creative team. Title: Slaughter on Tenth Avenue. Well, that that's a bit melodramatic, but okay. Slaughter. <laughs> Just looking at this. Oh, all the uh, names mentioned in this uh, issue. Oh, President Jimmy Carter. Peanuts. John Belushi. Sad animal house. I know. I think they mentioned that Saturday Night Live issue, which we'll have to do one day. Maybe in April. Yeah, you you can get Charlie on that one. Oh! (laughs) He'd appreciate it more. He was alive back then. (laughs) I was, but I was one <laughs> in 1979. Jeez. As dawn, bra- as dawn breaks, Spider-Man lies on the snow-covered roof of the West Side Manhattan tenement where Nick Fury gunned him down a few hours before. Rude. Melodramatic spider. <laughs> he was You're li- alive, aren't you? <laughs> oh my god, are you talking to the comic or one of your many dates the next morning? You're alive, aren't you? Get out! There's an Egg McMuffin in the Uber. Get out of here. And I know we've done the uh, that joke before, but it is so true. Uh, here's your grab bag. Get out. Don't mention Bendis to a Moonies. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Poor Moonies. I'm going to change the three personalities. Oh. Uh, but yeah, Spider-Man was left for dead, but he is not, and soon he regains consciousness. Oh, thank goodness. After having difficulty breathing, he removes his mask, and then he recalls the events of the previous night, if you had not... Wouldn't it be funny if he actually had amnesia? (laughs) I was just waiting for it, actually. I'm like, oh, they didn't do it. (laughs) Wait, he's gonna wake up and think he's a school teacher named Natalie Rush? Or Nancy Rush? (laughs) No, he's going to think he's a college kid who's got some papers due. Oh! <laughs> Burn! Oh, my God. I think I just cracked in the, the uh, upcoming issues. He has amnesia. He uh, thinks he's Ben Riley. Oh. oh. That's the twist. Oh, that's the twist! I'll allow it. <laughs> Having difficulty... Uh, yeah, so he's recalling the previous night if you didn't read the last issue. He remembers finding Nancy. Yeah, I uh, remember he finds her. Remembers being attacked by S.H.I.E.L.D. The subsequent battle and how Fury shot him. He remembers feeling blood on her chest. Whoa, he felt her. He feel, remembers feeling blood on her chest. and then It was his, her abdomen, though. So why were you feeling her chest, buddy? It was slippery. My hand was slipping. Uh-huh. Caught you, Pete. <laughs> Caught you red-handed. No, no. Get 1979, man. They let guys get away with a lot, I guess. Uh, and then attacking Fury. Since he is alive, he knows that Fury used an anesthetic bullet. Oh. 1979. Mercy bullets, baby! What do you do? What do you do? Uh, raid the Punisher's arsenal? 1979 arsenal? <laughs> uh... Since Fury used the same gun on Nancy, Spider-Man decides she must be alive as well, and he web swings away, hoping to track her down. <laughs> I love how you call your shots, Babe Ruth. Uh, uh, oh no, you're, that's tapping. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, inside the skyscraper, the House of Shields, New York headquarters, Fury is discussing the night's events with Jasper Sitwell. They look Jasper, <laughs> you just know he's evil. <laughs> <laughs> they look in on the Black Widow, who is under sedation, being treated by a Shield medic, Doctor Ames. It is difficult, Doctor Ames. <laughs> I mean, okay. 90s Joe Kids, yeah. Dr. Ames could have been worse. Could have been Dr. Hills. <laughs> Department stores, kids. There used to be many more uh, rather than Target and Walmart. 
before the poor in- Kmart. Before the internet. <laughs> oh, I know. They're not even in New Jersey anymore. Oh my god. Ray's got them all to itself. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? And down there, they probably think like the K stands for kangaroo or something. That's at Nightwing PDP. I will not have Australian slander, sir. Try the veal. Try the veal, kids. Sounds like a bland, Jan. But it's all kangaroo. Uh, It is difficult for Fury to figure out what is going on, so he orders Ames to get the widow ready for interrogation by sunset. Fury tells Sitwell that the widow contacted him a while ago in a panic to warn him of a terrible disaster, but then she disappeared. They finally found her, but Val disobeyed his orders and tried to kill her instead of simply capturing her. And that's why we don't hire women, because they don't listen. Moody women. (laughs) She must have been on her period. Oh! (laughs) I'm telling you, the way they wrote women back in the day, especially at Marvel, big yikes. (laughs) For comics in general. Too much <clears throat> too much has been going wrong with Shield lately, continues Fury. And if he does not find out what is going on soon, they may not remain alive long enough to regret it. Ray's Lord Ooh. and Savior's Crocodile Dundee. Oh, Russell. Peter Parker arrives at the Daily Bugle building and heads for the library, the morgue, where he asks the librarian Maggie McCulloch for information. Again, pre internet kids. Oh man, he had to know the Dewey Decimal System. Oh no! He didn't. There's no one in there. No, we know. <laughs> they still give you the card. You gotta go. Oh, true. The gruff lady hands him a telephone directory and tells him where to look up Shield's act. Oh, she tells. Oh him. my God! They're in the phone book. Come on. I know. They're not in the phone book. The CIA is not in the phone book. I'm just saying. Marvel's team. universe don't make sense now. <laughs> this comes all they, crashing down. They have an 800 number. I mean, that is the biggest plot toy. It's like, okay. Let's see, here, would you like to call the super secret organization? Okay. Uh, uh, and the address is in there? It's not even just the number. It's the address. Really? <laughs> After making some telephone calls, Peter heads for the skyscraper. When he enters, he swiftly runs by the security guards and takes an express elevator to the 50th floor. The express elevator doesn't have a passcode? What is going I mean, literally in nice hotels and nice high rise, just like residential buildings, there's a passcode for express elevators, but whatever. Whatever. Fantastic Four had a lock on their elevator, but Shield doesn't? Well, let's be honest. She was a bunch of bumbling idiots. 1979, man. No funding. <laughs> the startled they, have, they haven't discovered selling drugs to the inner city yet. Oh, <laughs> burn. Burn. Uh, but the startled guard sound the alarm as Spider-Man, temporarily safe in the moving car, quickly changes into his costume and climbs out onto the car's roof. When the elevator doors open, the guards are waiting for him, but he is nowhere in sight. As Ames files his report on the Black Widow's condition, the view screen of the video phone on his desk starts to glow. Then a voice tells him that the Black Widow is an enemy whom he must destroy. His eyes glaze. The hypnotic physician tries to stab her with a scalpel, but fortunately she regains consciousness just in time and slams him into a wall. She does not know where she is, but she quickly finds her costume, puts it on, and heads down a hall. Man, a lot of her getting in and out of clothes this arc. Uh, Rated B for boobies. Hey, oh! Or booty. Oh, yes. You can find this one collected in the, uh, yes, the, the B collection, kids. In your booty. Um, Nobody tell Rob, please. I don't want to be canceled. She is confused, still unable to reconcile her imagined life as a teacher with the possession of a trained killer's reflexes. Suddenly, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent attacks her, but even before she can react, Spider-Man knocks him out with a punch to the jaw. Yeah, make it with that chin music, see? Uh, then he quickly... What is this, the 1930s? 79, close enough. Then he quickly explains that they're in the basement of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Manhattan skyscraper, because everyone knows where that's at. But when alarms suddenly sound, the Black Widow starts to panic. 
As more S.H.I.E.L.D. agents run in, Spider-Man knocks the Black Widow out and carries her up a ventilator. Ah, she, she's getting too moody. Got to knock her out and carry her out. Uh, 1979. And carries her up a ventilation duct all the way to the skyscraper's roof. And again, cliche. Yeah, the ventilation shaft is big enough for the both of them. As a Not Another Teen movie stipulates, it is big enough for two adolescent males. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so an adult male, you know, the size of an adolescent and a woman. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, okay. Black Widow is actually, well, in this particular, she's very spelt. Um... He now knows that someone has somehow removed her memory, so he must try to help her regain them. Give her a kiss. Give her a kiss. Oh, wait, this isn't a Disney movie. My bad. Not yet. 80 miles west of Manhattan, the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier soars two miles above the Earth. At the bridge of the airship, Clay Quartermain receives a report from New York about the Black Widow's escape. Okay, but... The helicarrier is literally the best aesthetic of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think it's the most well-known. And it's just that that's that's when you know S.H.I.E.L.D.'s about to do some epic stuff. Are you saying it's hella cool? Hella cool, bro. Hella cool. <laughs> Russell, save the bees. Uh, Those boobs scare me. Again, not Steven Splat artwork. This artwork is beautiful. Exactly. Quartermain is hypnotized, and the person who controls him stands in the shadows behind him with her with her two henchmen. Realizing that Ames has failed, she orders the Silver Samurai to use his ring to teleport Boomerang to Manhattan. Oh, damn it, Chris Claremont with the Silver Samurai. Damn you to hell. And Boomerang. Ugh. How, like, how, how racist can you get? I mean, it, so, Silver Samurai. And, oh, is he looking for his shekels, Lil? He's looking for his shekels. Seriously? No other reason to have so hard is it to not use Silver Samurai? Apparently, it's very, it's very hard for him to do that. Whoa! He's like, well, she attacked Black. He she attacked Black. He attacked Black Widow last time. I guess. Russell, Russell all caps. The silver samurai. Exactly, exactly, sir. Exactly. I all want to say shekels. Uh, so yes, boomerang and silver samurai sent to destroy both the Black Widow and Spider Man. The samurai asked to do the mission by himself because he has unfinished business with Spider Man. But I the bet. unfinished business. Oh my! Eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows. Sam <laughs> samurai sword penetration. You know. Uh, we've been working with Little Hellfire too long. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but the woman says she needs the samurai by her side. Defiant, but nevertheless obedient, the samurai vanishes with Boomerang. Then the woman turns on a television where she learns from the CBS Morning News. What? CBS? Come on. Killing me. 1979. We only had three channels, didn't we? Somebody asked Charlie Esther. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I mean, CB it was either going to be CBS. Oh well, yeah, Fox CBS. didn't become a thing until 1986, so I think you're right. Yeah, so it was either going to be CBS, ABC, or uh, NBC. <laughs> and we already did the Saturday Night Live, so that covered the NBC. So now we're on the CBS. <laughs> WNBC. WNBC. Yeah, go check out our uh, feature on right now for the Howard Howard Stern uh, movie review. Private parts review. Yeah. Again, and it, once again, okay, I'll do it the right way, Charlie. So one of our co-hosts was topless, so you are gonna have to subscribe to find out which one. Only he only admitted it on capes. <laughs> I know. He's like, you should say it's me. It should, say, you know, I'm like, I'm like you, everyone knows no one else is getting topless but you. I'm like, oh, you really think? Lilith or Mornell went insane and it was just like, oh yeah. Hashtag free the nipples. <laughs> hey, if you want to, that's fine, but I'm, I'm pressuring you, but you uh but yes, she, a mess. So the mystery woman learns from the CBS morning news that the president is scheduled to address Congress later that evening. Jimmy! 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 <laughs> when his speech is finished, she muses, the world will never be the same. Uh, just wait a couple decades. Uh, 
Aw, I'm, I'm glad nobody ever tried to assassinate Jimmy Carter. He was so harmless and sweet. I mean, incompetent, but harmless and sweet. Mm -hmm. On Pier 30 in Lower Manhattan, just east of Chinatown, Nick Fury speaks with Dennis Nayland Smith from a telephone booth. Oh, Lord, three names. He a says, telephone booth? What's What's that? It's back in the day before the cellular telephone. The, the thing Superman used to use for a changing booth? Okay. Oh, man. We lost that. We lost that. Iconic. I know. He suspects that an enemy has somehow taken over S.H.I.E.L.D. and he needs Smith's agent, Shang-Chi, to help him. As he enters his sports car, he recalls that Nancy Ruffman was the Black Widow's cover identity when she first came to the United States as a Soviet spy. Soviet? Ugh, <laughs> this book is old as dirt. Oh yeah, that wall's still up, kids. Could her defection be a fake? Is she still working for the Russians? If not, he wonders, then for whom? The tracer that he planted on her is still broadcasting, so he turns on his tracking well, and drives away. Spider-Man needs to get some of those tracers. If it's still working after all this time. Seriously. But unknown to him, his car is bugged as well, and Boomer <laughs> flies after it unseen. It's just an inception of bugs. Spider tracer, this what tracer, that What is this, the clone saga? Someone, someone following someone is also being followed. In the shadow? Exactly. In a trench coat. <laughs> oh, never change, Marvel. Classic. The lurker is being lurked after. Uh, he who lurks after the lurker. <laughs> uh, sometime later, Nancy awakens in Peter Parker's apartment. Hey, Lord. And he offers her a bowl of Aunt May's chicken soup. Nobody tell Mary Jane. <laughs> Man, he must think you could get a woman out of her pants because isn't this the second soup he's given her? It's it's a way to a man's heart is through his stomach, Peter. I know you were lusting after Flash as quiet as his cat, but it's a man's heart <laughs> through his stomach. <laughs> Washing the dishes, sweeping and vacuuming and taking out the trash. That's how you get a woman. Burying her ex-boyfriends in the backyard. This is how you get a woman's heart. If you know how to run a backhoe, just saying. Hey <laughs> uh, That's like a triple entendre, but... I was going to say, <laughs> what does Lil' Hellfire call her dead boyfriends that she buried in the backyard? And what did she use? Backhoes. <laughs> what was... Oh, Lord, this is a joke, Russell. What was Black Widow's major in college? <sighs> Hit us with it. That punchline! That punchline in one minute. Uh... <laughs> He explains that, uh, that Spider-Man brought her there. Oh, God. And you should sleep. And he said, you should sleep with me. And she says groggily that she remembers being in a hospital where a doctor tried to kill her. Uh, oh. Was well, Black Widow's major in college? Ursa major. Get out. Get out, Russell. <laughs> you hit the, you hit the putty business line. You hit it. Congratulations. I also say you don't even get a drum roll. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, she remembers being in the hospital where a doctor tried to kill her. Peter reassures her and asks her her name, but she is too confused to reply. Then the memory of being tortured assails her, and she starts to scream in fear. Peter calms her down, run, wondering what could possibly have been done to her. Suddenly, the door smashes open and Nick Fury covers them both with his pistol. You know, they are under arrest for espionage and treason, he declares, and he orders them out of the building and into his car. Suddenly, Peter's spider... Now the spider sense tingles. And he shouts a warning as he knocks Fury and Nancy over. Then the car explodes. Fury oh, sees... God, cars explode so easily in comic book universe. Exactly. Fury sees Boomerang flying through the smoke and starts shooting. No, 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 not Boomer. Boomerang, guys. <laughs> oh! <gasps> you know you just put that in the atmosphere. The <laughs> name Boomer. Who's he, get, who's he gonna attack? Uh, the champions, the new warriors, you know. We're gonna bring <laughs> back, you know. <gasps> oh my god, that's gonna be Damien's new nemesis, Boomer. Okay, Boomer! It's like, bro, that was like so two years ago, but go go off. <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, but that's DC. Exactly. He covers them with his pistol, love gun. Love gun. Oh. 
How are you gonna make it? Nice. nice. We're nice. We're nice, Doc. We're nice, nice and PG th- PG thirteen wholesome here. Me, me, and the Virgin Little Hellfire do not enjoy that uh, kind of humor. <laughs> she couldn't even keep a straight face for two seconds. I'm like, uh, sir, have you met us? I think they've met us. That is a bold face lie, sir. You're going to hell for that lie, sir. I was going to say, no, I meant virgin in the sense that her blood hasn't been used in a dark ritual, but I don't know if I can even say that. Uh, it was 1979. Kiss was already done until 1996. Yeah, thank you, that 70s show, for bringing Kiss back into the fold. Uh, well, they figured out they could sell coffins. Uh, all right, so yes, Boomerang uh, blows up the car. Nick Fury starts shooting, knocking the criminal's boomerangs out of the air. Jeez. Despite being handcuffed, Peter slips away in the confusion, breaks the cuffs, and dressed as Spider-Man, tackles Boomerang from behind. Shut up, Will. <laughs> Spider-Man... What is subtext? I know, I know. <laughs> See, but when you knock a boomerang down, does it pop back up? Or hey, oh, that might be a question for Ray. Uh, you know, it's a lot of mate. Uh, Poor Ray. <laughs> you said you were going to send me feedback, Ray. Where's my feedback? <laughs> Where's the feedback, Ray? <laughs> You gotta break your legs. Send you down my feedback for me, kid. Uh, Fury refreshes to help, telling the widow to stay undercover. But when she sees the battle, she instinctively decides to join in. When Spider Man. You know, women, they don't listen. Ah, oh, 1979, I know. How, how dare she come out of the kitchen? Come on. When Spider Man is hurled off the roof, she quickly places herself beneath, beneath him and breaks his fall. So much innuendo. Stunned, Spider-Man gasps that Boomerang's boot jets caught him head on, and he thanks her for saving his life. The Widow asks him to get the handcuffs off her so they can both... I don't know what's going on. Black this Widow's- sounds like a fanfic, baby. I know. Sounds like your hard drive. Battling Fury is battling Boomerang by himself. They quickly head for the roof where Spider-Man dives into the cri- dives into the criminal. Well, but just as he is about to knock him unconscious, the Silver Samurai, Lil's favorite, materializes in a flash of light behind Boomerang. Spider-Man recognizes him from previous battles. Uh, see last episode. Uh, and sees the teleport ring that oh god, and sees the teleport ring that John Belushi once had. What the hell is this? I don't know what's going on. This is wild. This, yeah. this, this is Claremont at his finest. Just, don't let Claremont write things. More than one issue, he's gonna go bug wild, guys. This is this is the thing. I know. I mean, uh, wild like an animal. I mean, the, yeah. the story just turned into a buck wild bacchanal. I don't know what's going on anymore. I think in April we have to cover that Saturday Night Live issue just because John Belushi had a teleporting ring. What the hell? He was Deadpool before Deadpool was Deadpool. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> handled his coke. Well, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> too soon, buddy. Too soon. I know. Spider-Man warns Fury and Widow about the Samurai's energy sword, which cuts through steel like butter. Boomerang tells the Samurai that their opponents are helpless and urges him to finish them off. Hey, oh, but- you, you miss it. It's smooth like butter. You know, like the BTK, the BTS song. I don't know what that is. No. K- it's K-pop. Don't worry about it. I know. I know. I'm, I know who they are, but yeah, I don't know their song. Like Those butter. men sucked. That Cajun sauce sucked. Oh my. Like butter. Uh, Boomerang tells the samurai that their opponents are helpless and urges him to finish them off. But the sam- finish him. finish him. But the samurai declines. Uh, finish him, saying they are merely off balance. Uh, there is too much at stake to risk defeat. He continues as he activates the teleport ring. Then the samurai and boomerang vanish in a light burst. The widow says that bits and pieces of her memory are returning, so she may soon be able to tell them where the samurai and boomerang have gone. She's still not certain who she is, Nancy Rushman or the Black Widow. 
but she does know that unless they act quickly, the world may soon be destroyed. Uh, it's not a summer annual event. Calm down, sister. Oh, my. But yes, uh, Spider-Man recalled the whole Silver Samurai Saturday Night Live thing was from Marvel Team Up 74. He states the Samurai took it from the actor John Belushi, but this should be considered a topical reference per sliding time scale, particularly since Belushi died in 1982. Ooh. So, yes. Uh, looking to see if there's any other notes. That's the pertinent note. <laughs> Nothing pertinent. So a lot more action, Lil Hellfire. Man, these last two issues could have... Again, modern comics, this would have been six issues. That I mean, like I said, Chris, Chris goes off, bro. Like He had no... Um, I just feel like he didn't have any uh, oversight. Well, what is, what is 1979? Uh, Smoked a doobie. And again, they're, they're, I think they're all thinking, oh, yeah, this is kids reading it, you know. They didn't know what they had on their hands. <laughs> true i wonder like you know when they do like uh like specialty issues or covers how like people like pick those up you know even if they don't usually collect comics I wonder if a lot of saturday night live fans <sighs> picked up like that issue that marvel team up issue when it came out just to see what it was i wonder how much it's worth um yeah i wonder <laughs> we have to, we have because <laughs> i think the special guest was stan lee <laughs> Oh, really? I think the host was Stan Lee and the musical guest was Rick Jones. Oh, my God. That sounds bananas. <laughs> I told you. We've got to cover this. This is, oh, okay. April. The, you know, we have. April, April Fool. <laughs> that, maybe a Stilt Man issue. Yeah, we're going to be all. Uh, hold on. Marvel team up. See, kids, this is the sound of everyone Googling. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, bu- 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 mycomicshop.com wants oh there's no price on here oh that's the worst they're so unorganized with it oh there's a Mark Jewelers edition what is that and there's a UK edition hmm yeah, I was reading something about this, and like, I don't know if did they mention something about Australia because I think they said, yeah, like Saturday Night Live wasn't even down there yet, so it was like, you know, anyone read this in Australia, they're like, what the hell, is Saturday Night Live? Exactly. Uh, hold on. Uh, let's go to eBay, kid. Oh. There you go. Price of the land of overpriced garbage. Oh my. There, I said it. Yeah, I mean, well, how many Funkos have you bought from there? Oh, I don't buy my... I buy my Funkos directly from Amazon or the store. Uh Oh, you can get a very fine cop. There's... Yeah, that's not too expensive. I'm seeing one for eight fifty nine seven. Wow! Yeah, so you... I mean... I mean, well, with shipping, it'll be a little over 10 bucks. But yeah, so r- around the neighborhood of probably like 10 12 bucks, kids, with shipping and everything, you can get one of these. All right, it's done. I'll order mine after we get off the... After we get off our podcast and we'll we'll do it we'll set it for next year done <sighs> you know how many times love hellfires ordered comics after she's gotten off i mean it's my version of smoking cigarettes so oh my get out <laughs> order it instead of make me a sandwich order me some comics and get out am i right ladies hello <laughs> hello um yeah so any any other thoughts on this one uh no besides the sheer bananas of it all like it started off so simple that it's just snowballing into this insane epic showdown and i'm just like wow we went from point a to point like m in 2.2 seconds nice yes uh so let's get to the next one. Marvel Team Up 84. This one on the cover. Spider the penultimate. The penultimate. Take a drink. Yes, Marvel Team Up featuring Spider-Man and Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. At least Shang-Chi gets a little bit of shine in this one. And it's not too oofy, but... It's a, it's a shirtless man, little Hellfire. Exactly. That, that's why I'm okay with it. August 1979. <laughs> uh, I believe... Wait. 
maybe the same team. Uh, letterer might be new. Diana Elbers. So it's not a complete sausage sausage fest this time. Uh, oh lord. <sighs> This title, I think it might be kind of a spoilery. Catch a falling hero. Is that like catch a falling star? <laughs> the itsy bitsy spider went the waterfall. Oh, Lord. Man, these, these synopsises are very detailed. It is 7 p.m. Somebody on a, really liked this team up. <laughs> I think so. It is 7 p.m. on a cold, clear weekend on a, a cold, clear weekday evening as the Silver Samurai, Boomerang, and their leader... The Viper! Ah, oh, the Viper! <laughs> okay, little Hellfire. Uh, okay, little Hellfire, you have to read an issue, and you can keep. You have to keep a character, and you and you can lose one. Who do you keep, and who do you who do you get rid of? Silver Samurai or Viper? Viper. What keeper? Get rid of her. Get rid of her. She's out of there. So you'd rather read Silver Samurai over Viper? Viper's very one-dimensional. She's a nice. And not a lot. It doesn't come with a lot of action either. Like she'd rather have people do her dirty work. So. Hmm. She'd rather have. She'd rather have people do her dirty work, and she's a nihilist. Hmm. Who? Who does this remind me of? Yeah, it, it's too much. Like reading about myself. That's why. If I if I if I want some Viper action, I'll go out and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your Viper action. Ah. Uh... Uh, but so yeah, Samurai Boomerang and Viper tune in the nightly television newscast with Walter Cronkite. <laughs> is that ABC? Is that the Trinity? I don't know. Is that is that, is that, is, is, is that CBS? I don't know. They did do CBS. I don't know. That that's before my time. So I was gonna say, where where's our expert at? We're doing me now. Uh, from the shield from Shield Helicarrier. Nope, that's CBS Evening News as well. So, a oh, little hellfire. You all, you've you have uh, affected me in so many ways. And from now on, in my head, I'm just going to be saying the Shield uh, Hella Cool Carrier. Hella cool, man. Hella cool. Look at all those propellers. Uh, that's oh. that Shield trademark, and that that's one of my favorite like parts in like the actual like Shield TV show when they finally do like show up with all the. I was like, it only took us forever. And it was Hydra, technically, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. All the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, including Clay Quartermain, who is at the carrier's helm, are under the Viper... Quartermain! Quartermain! Under the Viper... Put some respect on that. <laughs> under the Viper's hypnotic control. As the Viper listens to the newscast, which announces the president's address to the nation later this evening, before a joint session of Congress, she recalls the day long past when she and the Cobra... Then members of the Serpent Squad. See, that's why I don't like her. She very, she gives me very bad GI Joe villain of the week. And I know the exact story she's talking about because it gets better. Little Hellfire when her. Oh, I know. Members of the Serpent Squad battled Nomad. Yep. Which was Steve Rogers. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. The first Nomad story from it was like around Captain America one eighty or one eighty one something like that. Yes. Oh, he was really pushing it with this. I don't know <laughs> really how. I don't know how many right comic writers were doing drugs back in the seventies, but I all think of them. Few. Hashtag changed my mind. Smoked a doobie. Smoked a doobie. No, they were they were doing something a little more hardcore than doobies. <laughs> Drop, dropping something and not tracks, little hellfire. <laughs> exactly. Uh, just a little acid, you know. <laughs> oh my. Uh. When their building collapsed in flames, she plunged through the floor and the serpent crown of Lemuria. Hey, serpent crown. Remember that, kids? I'm having flashbacks. Somebody save me. Atlantis attacks flashbacks. Uh, uh, oh, please. She loved it. it was gimme, gimme. Use I'm more thirsty, more. bro. Oh, my. Uh, and the serpent crown of Lemuria fell from her head. Oh, she lost her crown, though. A falling brick knocked her out. <laughs> wow! Wow! Taken out, taken out by a brick. And then the fires ignited a ruptured gas main and the house blew apart. She was protected by collapsing bricks and masonry that formed a cocoon around her while she That's was... not how that works. Ah, so lucky. 
<laughs> again, it, but again, at least back in these times, like they tried to explain when a villain like looked like they died, they tried to explain how they came back. It didn't have to make sense. It's just that they tried. Modern comics now, they're just like, oh yeah, they're back. How? I don't know. Just make something up yourself. Head cannon it yourself. I'm looking at you, Dan Slot. Uh, <laughs> Bird. Uh, then she found a drain pipe, one of the Cobra's secret exits, and entered a sewer that carried her beyond the police lines around the house. So she crawled through the sewer, kids, to uh, escape Nomad. Talk about a poopy situation. Oh! Are we saying... God, the, uh, I wish we were on Patreon. I know. So, the poop hit the fan? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my. Uh, she emerged from a manhole and started to walk <laughs> over. Uh... I'm seven. It's fine. Say, you know how many manholes love hellfires? Entered and exited. Oh! Damn, damn straight. <laughs> uh, but enough about that third bedroom. Uh, she emer uh, weakened and disarmed. Then a van pulled up alongside whose driver introduced himself as Ishiro Tag Tagara, a cadre leader with the Japanese Red Army, a group that occasionally worked with Hydra. Oh, speaking of Hydra. <laughs> yes. He remembered her from the time she was Madame Hydra, one of the organization's powerful leaders. Together, they drove unnoticed by Nomad and the police, and Tagara eventually brought her to his estate in Japan, where she spent several months recovering her health. She was surprised to discover that she had fallen in love with T Tagara. Oh, no. Oh, duh. And, uh... And she uh, also evolved a master plan to crush the United States. And if her plan, her plan was. We gonna... were actually just, well, no, actually, we've never been minding our business. Never mind. I was gonna say America wasn't that bad. We were just minding our business, but no, not really. Our plan was gonna be huge, bigly. Oh, uh, well, with America mortally wounded, she reasoned, the oppressed people of the world would rise in the ultimate revolution. Eat the rich. Eat the rich. Wait a minute. Oh, somebody's coming around to Viper. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, is this me? Is this what I have to look forward to in my old age? Crawling through manholes on Hellfire. The first, oh, step in, the first step in her plan was to field test a hypno beam, which she compelled all the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents in the underground New York office to depart for one hour. At the same time, she sent the Silver Samurai, one of Tagara's allies, to steal a crystal that would have made an ideal energy source for the. Oh, not the crystal! Oh, not it's the always a crystal. Not the dark crystal. Uh, that would have made an ideal energy source for the teleportation unit that she wanted to construct. Uh, unfortunately for her plan, Spider-Man and the Black Widow stopped the samurai. Remember that? Faced with this impasse, it required more time for her to create her teleport ring. But just as she was about to use it, the device was lost was lost in the mail and misdelivered to none other than John Belushi of the Saturday Night Live television. <laughs> so she mailed it, kids, and that's how it, it went to John Belushi by accident. You FedEx important things, guys. Like, I support the USPS. I send basic stuff that I'm not worried about, but important stuff, you gotta FedEx it. it no, nice actually, not even FedEx. U UPS. UPS. Please sponsor us, by the way. Oh, UPS. <laughs> 1979, no one was using that newfangled UPS. It was all the United States post office. Uh, God, we have... Well, actually, FedEx is older, is almost as old as the USPS, if not older, maybe. Yes. But mark my words, kids. April, we're doing that Saturday night. <laughs> this time, the silver... <laughs> Lil, if you can get drunk for it. Yes! This time, the Silver Samurai succeeded in retrieving it, and soon he and she teleported into the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier sick bay early one morning when most of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were off duty. They replaced the physician's video phone with a device modified... Wow, they had a video phone in 1979? That's fancy. They were super spicy. With a device modified to project a hypno beam, and soon the physician was in their power. Then, every time a S.H.I.E.L.D. crewman was summoned to sick bay, he or she was likewise hypnotized. Wasn't this a Star Trek the Next Generation uh <laughs> the game? Yeah. They try they remember they, they 
it all came down to Wesley Crusher and um, Ashley Judd. <laughs> Again, a true. Oh, next generation. I love that show. Soon, Shield's seemingly impregnable headquarters was hers to command. As she concludes her reminiscence and delights in knowing that America's most trusted defensive system will soon be used to destroy the American government. At that moment, fingers it, crossed. Oh my! At that moment, a thousand feet above the helicarrier, Spider-Man and the Black Widow, who still believes she is a school teacher named Nancy Rushman, are silently descending on hang gliders toward the giant shield aircraft. They land carefully Watch on. Watch out for that bridge! Oh, she's not a blonde. It's okay. They land carefully on its flight deck, avoiding the vor vortices from its giant engines. Suddenly, Spider-Man's spider sense tingles, warning him of an approaching shield squad. The troopers arrive, but when they turn on their flashlights, they see no one. Spider-Man and the Widow, clinging to the side of the heli of the helicarrier, of the helicool carrier, breathe a sigh of relief. Then they make their way silently along the aircraft's hull. Spider-Man is used to walking on walls and is quite confident, but the Widow abruptly flashes back to her Nancy Rushman identity and becomes petrified with fear. Broads. Spider-Man quickly catches her in his arms and reassures her, and suddenly they find themselves kissing each other. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, shut up and kiss. Oh, oh they my. did it. They actually did it. Love at 1,000 feet. Again, check Love Hellfire's hard drive. Uh, uh, you know, there's a, there's an airline that specifically is, like, out there for people who want to join the Mile High Club. Like, they just take you up. You do it, and then you come back down. Or it's like, just like dating Love Hellfire. <sighs> Ticked you up, take you back down. So, yeah, so he's kissing a woman not in her right mind. Um, uh, it's the 70s. I know. Even though Spider-Man knows this is hardly the time or the place for this. Boing, boing. Boing. There's <laughs> blood in the wrong places. Hope he can still stick to the side of that helicarrier, kids. <laughs> Just then, Fury's air car approaches the helicarrier as planned. Spider-Man takes the widow's hand and gently leads her towards their goal. I bet you are. What's the goal? <laughs> uh, what's the goal? Like, you don't know, little hell. <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> no, please, seriously, guys. This is our little secret. <laughs> yes, nobody tell, nobody tell Rob. Clay, someone hypnotized him. Clay Quartermain in the helicarrier bridge clears Fury for landing. The Silver Samurai asks the Viper why they don't simply kill Fury and get it over with. But the Viper wants to avoid arousing outside suspicion. Oh yeah, flaming car parts raining from the sky might draw some suspicion. <laughs> Better to wait until he is That's in New York. Be all right. <laughs> yeah. Better to wait until he is in the helicarrier before destroying him, she says. When he lands, a group of agents meets him. He orders them to stow his air car, then deliberately turns his back on them and walks away. But when the agents raise their weapons to kill him, they are all rapidly knocked unconscious by the master martial artist, Shang-Chi, who is hiding in the air car. Well, he's good for something. Oh my. Suddenly, there is a powerful explosion. When the smoke clears, Fury lies unconscious, having taken the brunt of the blast. And Shang-Chi is facing Boomerang. Boomerang... <sighs> Does he come back around? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Boomerang con uh, contempt contemptuously tells Shang-Chi that he defeated a martial artist named Iron Fist, the not so Oh, big whoop! Big whoop! Oh, my. Sorry, Connor. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my. I. <laughs> I think that yeah, I think that was like either like the issue before or after Sabretooth's first appearance. Yes, kids, Sabretooth first appeared in Iron Fist. Don't ask. We don't talk about it. <laughs> well, of course he has to work in Iron Fist because was Claremont working on it at this time? I know eventually he does. Wait a minute. Oh, the Iron Fist fans had to deal with Claremont too? Really? I think I think so at a certain point. Oh man, he's looking for all the shekels in this story, man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Must have had the mortgage due. <laughs> I'm man. Uh, it said what well, says he tells Shang Chi he defeated a martial artist named Iron Fist not long ago. Uh, quotations. This is of course untrue. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. 
He hurls a razor ang, one of his weapons, but the martial arts master shatters it with a wristband. Then a oh lord, then a gasarang <laughs> explodes above Shang Chi's head in a cloud of nerve gas. What is this? Are we in Gotham? Did we teleport to Gotham? <laughs> is this Captain Boomerang? What? Uh, Shang Chi holds his breath, but suddenly the floor under him starts to descend, taking him out of danger. This surprises Shang Chi as much as it does his opponent. Boomerang attacks, but Shang Chi slams him in the abdomen. Boomerang retreats to hurl. Should have went lower. He's kids. in them guts. Should have should have should have hit him lower, kids. Uh, Boomerang retreats to hurl more of his weapons, which Shang Chi dodges or shatters as he works his way towards his antagonist. Finally, a series of karate blows knocks Boomerang to the floor. With his last bit of strength, the criminal hurls an explosive boomerang that turns the elevator area into twisted scrap metal. Moments later, Boomerang's image appears on a monitor, and he informs the Viper and the Silver Samurai that Fury and Shang-Chi have been taken care of permanently. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. <laughs> Boy thinks he beat Iron Fist. Come on. <laughs> I just need that narration. And of course, this was untrue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> drop. Of course, this is untrue. <gasps> Charlie says something. We just drop it. Of course, that was untrue. <laughs> Spider Man carries the Black Widow to a porthole that Fury told them about. They enter a storeroom not far from the command. Man, Spider Man and Black Widow ended up in a lot of storerooms. This, uh, a lot of tight, close spaces, man. <laughs> Oh my. Uh, the F was implied. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy. Because I know Lilith likes it long. Uh, but as they steal cautiously through the room, Spider Man's spider sense starts to tingle. I bet. Hey, oh! Well, so, yeah, I was going to say something's tingling. It's ting, ting, tingling, ting, ting, tingling. Suddenly, it's part shampoo, of course. Hey, <laughs> suddenly the lights go on and everyone pulls their pants back on, and they come face to face with a fully armed squad of Shield agents led by Clay Quartermain and accompanied by the Viper and the Silver Samurai. Uh, the Clay Quartermain, what are you gonna do? Ah, <sighs> uh, go on the run with uh, Bruce Banner and Rick Jones. Rick, who? <laughs> you know the guest on Saturday Night. No, no, don't. Seventy nine. Remember. <laughs> The widow recognizes the viper from her nightmares and collapses to the floor with a scream. It's like, damn, you ugly lady. <laughs> you be showing up in my nightmares. Oh, my. <laughs> Spider-Man demands to know what the viper did to her. The viper replies that she asked the widow questions that the widow refused to answer. Then the order, or the viper orders Quartermain to kill them. Just then, Boomerang enters with Shang-Chi, whose hands appear to be tied behind his back. Boomerang asks whether the Viper might want to question Shang-Chi the way she did the Widow. Annoyed at this unwanted show of initiative, the Viper orders Boomerang to put his prisoner with the others and kill them all at once. But then... Shut your mouth and do as I say. Nope. Okay, 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 I get it. She's me, I am her, I get it. But then a Boomerang strips off his cow and stands revealed as Nick Fury. See, that's what happens when you look to help in the face, man. Exactly. He only had one eye. <laughs> Shang Chi leaps into action and starts knocking out the shield agents. The martial artist recalls how, after the explosion, Fury recovered, defeated Boomerang, and dressed in his costume. Man, we're just stripping people left and right in this story. Chris Claremont has a fetish. <laughs> no kidding. I mean, have you seen seen Dream Jean Grey as the Black Queen? Come on. It is nice. Won't lie. Hey. -o. Uh, Shang-Chi then pretended to be his captive. Spider-Man, delighted with this turn of events, tells the Widow to stand aside while he helps Fury and Shang-Chi. Stand aside, woman. But the Viper asserts that Fury has no chance against hundreds of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, and even if he does manage to survive, he will still be too late to save the President. Then she and the Silver Samurai head to the bridge. When Spider-Man goes after them, the Samurai draws his energy sword to do battle. Spider-Man dodges, but the blade strikes a glancing blow that is hard enough to hurl him across the room, out the porthole, and into the open air two miles above the ground. So see that Catch up? a falling hero. Get it, guys. That's where we're finally paying off that title, kids. 
All right. So what did you think, Lil? It's it's a really busy issue. I like that. Uh, I, I do feel like it's a little jumbled. It's yeah. a little too fast paced. But, you know, with Chris Claremont, the more the better, you know, just let him get it out. Yes. And a lot of editor's notes here, kids. Yes. Um, yes. The Viper battled Nomad in Captain America 182. Uh, as we said, she sent the Silver Samurai for the Crystal and Marvel Team Up 57 last episode, kids. Scroll down. And of course, yeah, the whole John Belushi thing, Marvel Team Up 74, which we talked about. And Boomerang uh, brags about defeating Iron Fist. He's lying as Iron Fist defeated him as depicted in Iron Fist 13. And clearly, this was untrue. <laughs> he also brags about being able to sustain a blow from the Hulk. He is referring to his conflict with the Jade Giant back in Tales of Suspense 81 through 88. Damn, Tales of Suspense? I know! Yikes! <laughs> this is really old. <laughs> Something in black and white? Gee! Uh, I would, um, I, I thought that they were going to do a Mortal Hulk and a, at least a couple of issues in black and white to pay homage. I mean, really? even though they didn't, it was still, it's still a great book, but I always just figured that they would do that. I wonder if they'll do something in issue 50, the last one. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be extra, extra size. So even if not the main story, maybe we'll get a, like a black and white. Back. Not a giant size man thing, but a giant size Hulk I can still get behind, or maybe in front of. Don't judge me. Hey, <laughs> it's a giant size man thing. Oh my god, oh, that's a Patreon. We got to cover a giant size man thing. We've been saying it. Put it on the list. We just have so much stuff to do, Lil. It's a giant size man thing. You wanted to do the up and juggernaut first. Hey, -o. Well, we have to. Yes. Good for that release. And I've stopped drinking. It just keeps happening. Sober, drunk. There's always, there's only ever one thing on your mind, Lil Hellfire. All right. Ready to do this last one? Finally, issue 85. Marvel Team Up 85. Yes, this one has everyone on the cover. The conclusion. Spider-Man, Shang-Chi, Black Widow, and Nick Fury. Uh, from September 1979. It's going to be a hella cool time, man. Oh. oh, a new letterer, Clem Robbins. It seems like they have the same team, but the letterer keeps changing. Well, you know, as you do, letterers, well, no offense, are not that important. Oh, how dare you know? I was going to say maybe each editor or each letter gets exhausted because it is a Claremont issue. So they <laughs> Burn. we're doing a lots of lettering. <laughs> Bendis before Bendis was Bendis. <laughs> 79, man. There's a lot of people coming off a Marvel team up with Carpal Tunnel. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and Uncanny X Men. Uh, oh, Lord. So now, all right. So the title The Woman Who Never Was. Just the way men like it. Hell! <laughs> wow, well, Spider-Man. the 70s. Well, not true. Spider-Man plummets from the shield helicarrier, his body numb from being hit by the Silver Samurai's energy sword. In hey inside the massive helical aircraft, the Black Widow, Nick Fury, and Shang-Chi are battling a horde of shield agents hypnotized by the Viper. Quickly, the back Black Widow fights her way to a porthole and leaps after Spider-Man. Damn, that kiss must be good. As she falls, she snags his ankle with a wrist cable, and then she attaches another wrist cable to the helicoil carrier. Although the strain on her body is terrific, she manages to hold on to both Spider-Man and the helicoil carrier, and then she swings Spider-Man up toward the aircraft. But then the Silver Samurai slices through the conduit that the Widow's cable was attached to, and she begins to plunge toward the ground. Looking death in the face, a little hellfire. No, the Black Widow reverts to her Nancy Rushman persona and screams in terror. Ah, uh, getting hysterical. You women getting hysterical again. Ah, uh. that's what we do, bro. Don't judge us. <laughs> Unfortunately, Spider Man <laughs> must have woke him up. <laughs> Spider-Man's swing carries him to the helicarrier where he clings to the hull. Gouging a handhold, he braces himself against the sudden jerk as the cable holding the Black Widow tightens. He holds firm, but the effort leaves him barely conscious. <sighs> you're, you're lucky, Black Widow, man. You don't want Spider-Man catching you from a great height, man. Oh, yeah. 
Again, lucky she's not a blonde. Uh, and this isn't a Cherry Conway story. Uh, meanwhile, the Viper and the Samurai head for the Helicarrier's Bridge, where she orders Clay Quartermain to seal all security bulkheads and flood the ship with knockout gas. The hypnotized shield soldier obeys her orders, and seconds later, as Fury and Shang-Chi are leaving the storeroom after defeating the shield squad, steel walls suddenly box them in, and their enclosure fills with gas. Oh. They're gonna, yep. touch, they're gonna Dutch oven them to death. Uh, Shang Chi holds his breath, but Fury, still wearing Boomerang's costume, says that a single drop of gas anywhere on the skin will put a person out for a week. Whoa, man, what is this? Uh, something what from, are they doing over there from Little Hellfire's spooze? You know, something she's drinking. Jeez, <laughs> confident that Spider Man and the Black Widow have fallen to their deaths and that Fury and Shang Chi are helpless, the Viper tunes in the president to dress the call again with villains that are obsessed with television. Who is she, Bane? Bane, <laughs> that's right. Uh, the tube. Uh, oh, that's right. Practically, all the high officials of the United States government are in attendance, and the Viper smugly declares that before his speech is over, they will all die. Well, we do have a contingency. Come on. Does not everybody know that? Did they not know that in the 70s? There's do. always one designated survivor. Love she, that show, by the way. Shout out have, to Kiefer Sutherland. She didn't have time to learn stuff. Little, she was busy being buried by bricks. <laughs> hey and vacationing in Japan. Uh, she will crash the helicarrier into the Capitol building and grind it into rubble. Oh, please, leaving the leaving America leaderless. Again, that's not how that works. But I mean, <laughs> this is seventies. Not everybody knows. It's fine. I'm trying to say leaderless. You should say the, the government might be in disarray for a while. You know, forever. Yeah, I will say that we'll be in disarray, but we'll have a leader. We might not like that leader, and we might be in disarray, but we'll have one. I mean, I dealt with that for four years. Oh. <laughs> Into that vacuum, she continues, will step her revolutionary brothers and sisters. But her gloating abruptly ceases when Fury and Shang-Chi smash through the door into the room. Shang-Chi smash! Oh, my! Uh, no. Uh, here we go. Smash it! Here we go. Uh, they escape the trap through a maze of airtight passageways that only Fury knew about, which were j designed for just such a situation. Shang-Chi quickly cut, knocks out several shield troopers, but Fury has only one narco dart left in his gun, and he uses it on Clay Quartermain. <laughs> that's what you get, Clay. That's what you get. Uh, unfortunately, the almost equally skilled Quartermain gets off a shot that wounds Fury in the shoulder. As Shang-Chi heads towards the Silver Samurai, he sees Fury fall in a pool of blood. Then as the president's speech begins on the view screen, Spider-Man and the Black Widow smash through a window into the room. Again, glassmakers in the Marvel Universe. Very, very happy. Uh, faced with three powerful opponents. Also the first season of Arrow. He was always dropping through skylights. Okay, no truer words. Faced with three powerful opponents with only the Silver Samurai on her side, the Viper never nevertheless states that even death will that not even death will defeat her. Uh, Lady Death would like to have a word with her. I thought she was going <laughs> to retreat when she was like, oh, it's only the Silver Samurai. Here, get out here. In her hand, she holds the computer control module that operates the entire helicarrier. She orders the Samurai to hold the three battlers at all costs. The Widow tells Spider-Man to tackle the Samurai while she goes after the Viper. Spider-Man, afraid the Widow will, uh, will revert to Nancy Rushman again, tells Shang-Chi to follow her. He will handle the Samurai himself. See, kids, look, look, a uh, Shang-Chi Black Widow team up. See? Very popular. Shang-Chi, hop. <laughs> Shang-Chi, hoping Spider Man knows what he's doing, leaps after the widow. Spider Man rams into the samurai. Shut up, Lil. <laughs> and then in the ensuing battle, Spider Man definitely dodges the energy sword. All the oh, while. Oh, you dodged the sword. Okay, buddy. Spider Sense. All the while, the president's speech continues as he describes the seriousness of the continuing oil crisis. <laughs> Well, if you made electric cars a priority, oil wouldn't be a national security matter. But that's none of my business. Or did you know you can make a car that runs on water? On water? It, we're doing me now. Science. Spider-Man finally blinds the samurai with web, <laughs> with web fluid. 
and not sure web fluid. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Lil's like I hope it's web. I only hope it's only web fluid. <laughs> Uh, knocks the sword from his hand, but the samurai grabs Spider-Man and tries to break his neck. Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, Not in the face! <laughs> Spider-Man twists free, adheres, adheres out of reach to the ceiling, and knocks the samurai unconscious with a, oh, with a powerful salvu sema punch. <laughs> As the Black Widow steals through darkened passageways, on, in the helical carrier, her mind switches back and forth between her two personae. With each passing minute, she remembers more of her past life. She recalls how while on a personal mission to the Far East, yes, that is in quotes, she uncovered the Viper's plans but was captured before she could warn Nick Fury. The Viper tortured and interrogated her for days, but despite her best efforts, the widow refused to talk. A careless... Ah, that's how she snapped. Ah, I gotcha. Uh... A careless guard allowed her to escape, but the ordeal regressed her mind into the alias of an unassuming school teacher that she used long ago. Without Spider-Man's efforts, she might have stayed in that safe character forever, she muses. Oh, the magic kiss did wake her up. Suddenly, Shang-Chi places his hand on her shoulder, saying he is there to help. She replies that she must work things out alone, and he recognizes her inner conflict as similar to one he has had to face himself after leaving his father's house in Hunan. Suddenly, the viper appears. Trauma and... bonding. True. Suddenly, the viper appears and shoots at the widow with incredibly fast reflexes. Shang Chi dives in front of her and takes the bullet himself. Man, a lot of people taking bullets. Uh, the widow looks up from his pro... love gun. <laughs> from his prostrate form, as the viper declares haughtily that she meant to kill the widow. This, she continues, she will do after she has taken care of business. Snakes and spiders just don't get along. That's right. Get it? Then she presses a switch on her handheld control module and turns off the helical carrier's main engines. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, Chris Claremont's all about the Viper not getting along with Spider's Spider-Woman. Surprise. Surprise. They didn't mention Spider-Woman, man. He'd get more shekel. <laughs> then she presses a switch on her handheld control module and turns, on, yeah, turns off the main engines. When she... When she ascends to the upper deck, she hurls the module over the side, saying that without it, the engine cannot be restarted. As the widow clamors after the Viper onto the hub of one of the massive airship's rotors, the engines slowly come to a halt and the skycraft begins to descend. As Spider-Man uses his web fluid to staunch a Fury's wound, they notice that the engines have stopped. Fury says that the Viper probably booby-trapped all the bridge command systems and knocked out the vortex beam. Their only chance is to rewire the main trunk lines, which are so convoluted. Jeez. Which fortunately lie behind a nearby reinforced steel bulkhead. Spider Man slowly peels back the covering, and he and Fury set the work. Fury says his left arm is useless, ah, so Spider Man will do most of the physical work. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say anything about Little Hellfire having her arm in the fling before. Um, a talk. <laughs> Atop the hella cool carrier, the Viper gloats that, that its trajectory has been has been precisely planned to smash it into the Capitol building. Then explosive charges will destroy it and its target, killing the warmongering leaders of this corrupt nation. So they're going to crash the hella carrier into the Capitol and then blow it up. A little so, overkill, but okay. She wants to make sure it gets the job done. Now that's an insurrection. I'm just saying. Oh my. <laughs> What, a giant helicarrier, not a bunch of drunken rednecks? Uh, the widow replies that many innocent lives will be lost in the ensuing chaos. She has seen children starve in the ruins of Stalingrad, she says, and men freeze solid overnight. As she knows how extremely precious life is. As Fury and Spider-Man work fran frantically, not certain of what they are doing, but hoping for the best, the Widow and the Viper continue to battle atop the rotor maintenance platform. Although the Widow is nearly exhausted and psychologically crippled, her will to win and her fighting skills soon prevail. The Viper leaps at the Widow at final time. I see where this is going, but just then, Spider-Man and Fury restart the engines. The Widow docks and the Viper leaps off the platform. She grabs hold of the edge and the Widow grips her hand to pull her to safety. In her younger days, says the widow, she would have simply let her fall. Just then, the rotors start to spin. 
The force they generate in arresting the Helicol Carrier's fall whip the Viper out of the Widow's grasp, and she falls to oblivion. Uh, Again, catch a fallen hero. Oh, uh, yeah. A powerful blast of air from the Helicol Carrier's rotors shake the Capitol building, <clears throat> and all inside as the aircraft halts its plunge and just inches above the Capitol's dome, and the government is safe. Boo. Oh, my. The next morning, with everything under control and the hypnotized shield agents under sedation, Nick Fury, his left arm in his sling, uh, shakes Shang-Chi's hand in gratitude. Fury, <clears throat> Fury asks how he managed to survive the Viper's bullet, and he replies that he simply deflected it with his wristband and pretended to be dead. There's uh, a lot of that going on. He knew that the widow needed the opportunity to find her true self, so he did not interfere in her battle against the Viper. On the helicarrier's hull outside, Spider-Man and the Widow part company. She admits that Nancy Rushman, uh, as Nancy Rushman, she had briefly fallen in love with him. But, yeah. this, but this relationship cannot continue. Certainly cannot continue. Spider-Man knows this and quickly spins a hang glider parachute for her himself in the sun's uh, descends to the city below. Long ago, uh, muses the widow, she fought for her personal freedom. Now she has learned yet again that if she wants to be free, she must also be alone. Boo. I mean, good oh. for a woman, but boo. <laughs> so. Uh, it worked itself out. All the, all the busy work worked itself out, and I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. A little convoluted, a little too long. But so generally, overall, good story. Average together, give it a solid B minus. Well, I think I got to agree with that. Again, it's four issues. Claremont was like, "Yeah, man, I got four months." They really fleshed out the conflict, though, and I, I appreciate it. I mean, did 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 they dangle the what the hell is really going on a little too long? Yes, but that's Claremont. That's a Claremont thing. And he loves to play that long game too, because he he brought issue fifty seven into this. He brought issue seventy four into this. Although. They, there might have been other creators in between there too, but still, I mean, you know, he remembered. Oh, hey, remember what I did in '57? Let's bring that back. Such an ego maniac, but you kind of have to be. Shackle. He was a he was a rock star at this time, so Shackles. absolute rock star in the comic book world. Shekels, it's a it's yes. name for game with Hellfire Shekels. I know he plays it well. He play. I'm like, if I was an editor, I'm like, sir, sir, you have to, yeah, you, you have to get rid of one. Who's it going to be? Exactly. All right. We're going long, but real quick. I know you want to talk about Amazing Spider-Man 69. 69! <laughs> yes. Um, you know, the last issue was actually better, but we'll... I know. Even Charlie's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Nobody does. That, that's the beauty. I mean, I'm, th beauty. I'm thinking Teresa Parker is like going to be another android like the parents were. Uh... But what if she's not? Well, she's a clone. <gasps> like an ultimate. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's that was my vibe. Was it just me? I don't know. I could see I'm not a lot of people actually didn't even really like this issue. I saw a lot of my favorite uh uh critics not really digging it. Um I think we're tired of the chameleon conspiracy. Like the chameleon, it's like uh so overdone. And it's like and Jack o' Lantern Foreigner, come on. Come on. <laughs> Slide. <laughs> Come on. Nick Spencer. This isn't Thanksgiving. This is not the time and place for it. Nick Spencer proving, hey, look, I've read a bunch of Spider-Man stuff from the past. That That's exactly what it feels like. Uh, but the artwork, of course, it's Mark Bagley, so I'm never going to complain about that. Oh. The artwork was great. The cover was great. It's just the story. We're at, like, what, part three of that story? So. Yeah, something like that. But again, it's like, I mean, I might be here more. Here more the action is great. The action beats are absolutely great character designs great detailed background amazing but the story i'm over it <laughs> i mean i think i'd be more here for the chameleon conspiracy if we've got more in we still don't have answers for the whole kindred thing it's like now we're starting thank to you it's like i told you they were just going to pretend like that didn't happen didn't i tell you and again so that's where we're at and two it's like are we gonna like are we gonna rush to the finish line now because you know we got the news nick spencer's leaving now kids so Maybe rightly so at that point. I know, but I'm just saying, uh, did he have this planned out for like a hundred and now we're gonna have he's gonna have to like you know Oh, we're having a Tom King situation. Nice. I don't know if that was the case, but I was I was assuming it was probably something like that, but now he's leaving with seventy four, so 
eight seventy five. Give them seventy. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. it's, eight, it's Legacy 875, so... No one cares about the Legacy numbering, except for Marvel. Well, well, one, it's his last... And two, that way, it's his last issue. That way they can do double I, and start I, new. I, I think they've already confirmed it's oversized, so... Oh, okay, perfect, then. So we're getting probably an oversized conclusion, because, kids, after that, I guess they're doing, like, it. Amazing Spider-Man is going to be three times a month again, like it was when Brand New Day started, and they're bringing in a, because uh, we're trying to um, up those numbers. We're trying to get to a thousand as quick as possible. Well, I, think I see you. One other thinking back then was like, you know, instead of three separate Spider-Man books, where Amazing outsold the other two, why don't we just do Amazing Spider-Man three times a month? Save the paper, save the trees. I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, we have so many alternate spider books and um spider cast that it you know like like you know black cat and stuff like that it actually makes sense to me at this particular point in time and again they're gonna have rotating writers i guess because um yeah they're gonna have zeb wells our friend kelly thompson who agreed to talk to us in the fall when this all goes down so uh oh that's really amazing oh nice she's such a spectacular writer i love her so much yeah, Zeb Wells, Kelly Thompson, uh, Saladin Ahmed, who's right now, Miles Morales right now. Yeah. Uh, that should be fun. Cody Ziegler, who I'm not familiar with, and Patrick Gleason. Shut the front door, Mr. Gleason! Yeah, because isn't he hasn't even doing art, so I guess he's going to try his hand at writing. That That's very interesting. I'm looking forward to that so much. But I mean, it is time that Spider-Man does need to be shaken up and refreshed and, you know, it's, it's just time. If Nick wanted to go on and do something else or they need him elsewhere, uh, more power to him. We wish him all the best, of course. But yeah, it's time. It's time to shake it up. And of, course, and of course, for Synergy Kids, Amazing Spider-Man 75. We'll see the return of Ben Rowley as Spider-Man. Maybe. Possibly. I like your no, theory. I know. None of you were excited. Hey, Ray was excited, okay? Uh, all the spider cast, uh, all the Scarlet Pimp should have been excited. I know, I know. I didn't get. You got more. You got fresh content, Phil. You got fresh content. I know. You guys can do the Ben Riley story over there. Thank God. <laughs> oh yeah, two more episodes, kids. When we do the Scarlet Spider episode, oh yeah, we're gonna get, get a lot of that talk, kids. You know, we got a lot to unpack. It's a lot of mate. <laughs> but on that note, give them the homework. All right, yes. I pulled up the schedule here. So next time will be our last uh, well, our last Black Widow episode for Spider Cast. We'll be doing uh, Marvel Team Up. Uh, make sure I got the right number. Yes, Marvel Team Up uh, 98. So it'll just be one issue. And we'll talk current, sp whatever current spiders out. Exactly. And of course, uh, yeah, and then in two weeks, of course, like I said, another Scarlet Spider Sausage Fest. So we'll be talking about the big Ben Rally announcement and the greatest responsibility from amazing 406 nice. spider-man 63 and spectacular spider-man 229 hey when is um spider-man that new spider-man movie coming out i think it's december i think is yeah it? okay i wasn't crazy okay yeah, it's the end this, of the this year <laughs> here i'll double check but yeah oh oh yeah i was gonna say we'll we'll I'm, definitely review that we'll probably grab maybe one of one or two of the scarlet pimps yeah, I'm sure Charlie S. will probably want to get in on that too. But yeah, I mean, we'll we'll have some guests. Yeah, that'll be an episode. Cool beans. Uh oh, December seventeenth. Oh, okay. I'll be on vacation, so perfect. Oh my! All right. So, um, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, we have Thwippy Awards scheduled. We could always do that instead of Thwippies, or do we, we no? To... We have to do Thwippies. It's our tradition, Philip. I know it's gonna be like the third annual this year. We'll Let's go. Out. We'll figure it out. Uh, Damn it, there's no one issue. <laughs> All right, well, don't worry, kids. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, kids. Sound like a plan, Jan. All right, so, yes. We so. can always also always move Thwippies to Patreon, to Something like ooh, that. Ooh. True. All right, kids. So, yeah. Oh, oh uncensored little hellfire on the Thwippies. <laughs> nice. Because there's been some... There's been some fumbling in the spider property. <laughs> all right, kids. So, yes, yeah, send your thoughts on all this upcoming stuff. Hey, are you excited for the return of Ben Riley? Like being a certain Australian? Uh, don't, e don't hurt Phil's feelings. Tell him yes. Be gentle with me. Uh, email us, capes at lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 
2737. That's 614-38Capes. And remember to follow Ultimate Spider Cast on Facebook, on Twitter. Find links to all of our various social medias for all the various shows. Uh, links to this YouTube channel. Links to the Patri- the aforementioned Patreon. Where Little Hellfire really lets loose. Uh, links to merch. Links to everything all in one place. That's Linktree. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And please remember to support the Southgate Media Group. Go to southgatemediagroup.com. Also check out the Southgate Media Group Patreon for a bunch of free and paid content. So, see? They even give it away for free. <laughs> Rob's a cheap date. <laughs> oh, hey And also pick up Pod Life the book now in digital paperback. And when you do, please do be sure to use that link in the show notes from it for Amazon. I was going to say, use the link for Little Hellfire's Clubhouse, a.k.a. Uh, Amazon. Because uh, it doesn't affect you at all, but helps support this show, the network, and... That hella cool carrier himself. Oh, my. That man in his flying car gassing people raw, but Master Doom <laughs> Falcon. Make it rain, so says Master Do. Your weak sauce. <laughs> Yeah. Why did your eye drift over to my box? Like, who farted in here? Yeah. Why did your eye drift over to my box? Uh, Mark my words. Lilith. Um, if you nerds want to hang out with me and share your love for Spider-Man on the interwebs, find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire, on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire 69, and of course, on the TikTok at Lilith Hellfire 69. Duh. He hit him right in the face with that sack. He really did. Hey-o. He got him from the front, from the back, from the sides. Really oh. dodging that energy sword. <laughs> oh, so party in the front and the back? <laughs> Damn, you got a lot of drops. <laughs> not quite soft and not quite hard. Total package. Yeah, total package. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. I know. All right, kids. Let's flip our way on out of here. Thank you for joining us, kids. Don't know if I'm sober enough, so join us next time for Marvel Team Up 9 Wolves. Another Spider Man Black Widow and going to the owl. Who? But until next time, kids, swing on back. Keep it swimming!